What's up, Footland? It is mailbag time. We're back. It's the second show of August. We're up early. We're getting the content out as soon as we possibly can, and we are taking your questions and breaking down the news. Don't miss a moment. Hey, Foot Clan, guess what? The Ultimate Draft Kit is up what? and is awesome. <laughs> That's right. Look, we all know that everybody goes in to a draft with rankings, Whether even if you don't, even if you're going in there with the ADP of the platform. But not everybody's rankings are the same. This is why this podcast has become famous for helping win championships. We have very highly accurate rankings that what? are <laughs> that are are the best rankings. Yeah, you're very just <laughs> smelling your own farts here, Jay. Well, look, I'm just saying when when it's proven accurate, it's proven accurate. Anyways, check it out. Tier based rankings <laughs> at ultimatedraftkit.com. <laughs> To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. <clears throat> Tuesday, August 4th. And we're back. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. It's nice to be here every day with you fine gentlemen. It is nice. I like being back. Look, I've had worse. Days? Yeah. Oh, or friends? or <laughs> all, all of the above. Keep going. Okay. All right. <laughs> Welcome in, the Fantasy Footballers. You can subscribe. It's easy. Click the button. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, ad-free. Google Podcasts. Oh, we, man. We, we appreciate the reviews, the support of the show. Um, Jason mentioned it, I mean, in a very <laughs> blustering very manner. Way. Uh, the Ultimate Draft Kit available right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. You can get access immediately. You can pause this, get it, come back to it, be browsing it while you listen. That is a thing you could do. Quick question of the day. Who is somebody that you have been consistently drafting in the very last round of your mock drafts. And we've been in some not mock drafts as right. well. So is there somebody that is there every time that you take every time? There is someone for me that is there almost a, every single a time. A special someone for you. Um, but I'm, I'm curious here because I see your answer as well, Andy. There's somebody and, for everyone, Mike. <laughs> and... um. Both of these players are are frequently available in the last round. Yeah, and your so your answer is what I wrote down by default first, and then oh, I, I it's kind of the default for all of us. I started looking around at some recent industry mocks, and he was going more in the like eleventh and twelfth round, so I took him away. Yeah, I mean, I, I I the the ADP I'm looking at, he's even going later. But Deshaun Jackson is my answer. He presumably is going to be the number one wide receiver for Carson Wentz to start the season. Alshon Jeffrey. We don't know for sure his timeline, but the timeline of his injury normally would say that he's going to start the season on the pup. Uh, there's been no indication to say otherwise. Um, and then, you know, Jalen Rager, who I love. I love Jalen Rager as a talent, as very exciting, is a rookie with no preseason, no OTAs. It's going to be hard. So I Deshaun Jackson, to me, will be Scoring a lot of fantasy points while he's on the field, just like he did last year, which was unfortunately only one game. But uh, in the last round to get a genuine, it's it's funny because what happens, I think, to a lot of people this, this season, here's my guess. They draft Deshaun Jackson in the last round of their league, and then the next day when the NFL starts and you're setting your lineup, he will actually be in your starting lineup, and you'll put him over someone you drafted in the fifth or sixth round when you actually look at the matchup and think, I think d scores more points. You don't think it'll be because everybody that put him on their bench for the first game last year was weeping and crying you and paid gnashing the their teeth? I mean, look, live and learn. The, the strange thing about Deshaun Jackson is, like, in mock drafts, I see Rager go ahead of him sometimes and I see DJ like those two guys are the first wide receiver off the board for Philadelphia depending on luck of the draw who you know my pick would be any of these rookie guys with the last pick whether it's Michael Pittman Jr. from Indianapolis whether it's Brandon Ayuk 
from San kidding? Francisco, whether it's Jerry Judy. Uh, yeah, Jerry Judy. That's fine. Uh, you know, any of these guys that uh, Justin that's, Jefferson. That's fine. <laughs> Why well, I'm putting them in order that I would draft them, and Jalen Rager would be at the top of that list. So, I, but that's what I wanted to say, right? I have Deshaun Jackson. You have Jalen Rager. With your last pick, uh, philosophically, totally fantasy different. football. Which 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 type of player do you prefer? I it depends on how the previous fourteen picks went. If I need to start a player, it's one hundred percent Deshaun Jackson. If I have the luxury of of you know I've drafted I'm three or four wide receivers deep. I know Djax is not in my lineup on week one. I'm taking Jalen Rager. I mean, I we've talked about Deshaun Jackson as this. Late round value on the show so much. This is still the same player who's finished 124th, 37th, 44th, 35th, 65th the last five years. You're not getting a season out of Deshaun Jackson. You're getting a game out of Deshaun Jackson. You're getting a couple of games out of Deshaun Jackson. I mean, he hasn't finished inside the top 20 since 2014. The odds are against him. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I think we all agree. That, so I is, mean, there's a reason he's on being my team. drafted in the last round. It's not like everybody's forgotten about this guy. Uh, it's because he can't stay healthy. But when he's healthy, he should be in he's, your lineup. Yeah, he's still very fast. Uh, it For me, it's Antonio Gibson, rookie running back for Washington. Uh, the ADP I'm looking at right now, running back 57. I know in a lot of our industry drafts, he goes earlier. I don't believe that will really be the case when you start doing your home leagues. Like, People don't really care about Antonio Gibson, but I like him uh, a, a lot. The athletic freak. Uh, He's one of three players exactly like Christian McCaffrey on the Redskins, according to <laughs> the Redskins. Or I'm sorry, the, the, Washington, the Washington football, football team. team Jason. Apologies. I uh, and he just he could take the starting job. We don't know who the starter is with Darius Geis and just this blah. Like who, who's the guy? It could be Antonio Gibson, but I've I've talked about him a lot. A player I want to highlight who. We haven't really talked about a lot on this show, but I've, is interesting, and I think we need to, is Paris Campbell, wide receiver for the Indianapolis Colts. Because, like, Michael Pittman's getting the love for the Colts as the secondary option to T.Y. Hilton. And I like Pittman. He's a very interesting player. He projects as a, a guy who could be a number one, an X receiver, just a dominant guy. It, Paris Campbell is not that player, but Paris Campbell's skill set fits a lot with what Phillip Rivers likes to do you know uh, you take some deep shots but also check that ball down and let your let your player with speed and agility and who can break tackles and make guys miss let them do the work for you and that's who Paris Campbell is he was a second round pick last year his season was essentially lost to injury he runs a 4-3-1 yes he's very very fast and like his season was lost to injury and to Jacoby Brissett not being the answer at quarterback for the Colts like we were excited. I'll, I'll say I. I was excited for Campbell last year. Andrew Luck was his starting, supposed to be his starting quarterback. So now he has a, a great quarterback again and is presumably healthy. So I just want to give your, some love to your, Campbell. Your points are 100% valid. I wasn't a fan of Paris Campbell coming out and then he was injured his whole year. So he's like not even on my radar. I don't care. But what you're right. saying is absolutely true. Um, and and sh should be on our radar. What about this? What about if you're going, I know we don't usually draft two tight ends, but it's your last pick in the draft and you want the chance of the miracle man himself, Will Disley. Oh, oh yeah! I, Maybe. I mean, what happens look, if week one he comes out? I'll, I'll draft 30 to 35 tight ends before I, Will Disley. I cannot believe how much you I still believe. I cannot either. Will Disley, like, the, he would be a miracle of modern science here's, if he's back. Here's the which I know he, there's he news. Pa he passed his physical. He tore his Achilles in November. They signed Greg Olson. They have a depth uh, a depth like, chart of tight ends that just makes Jason's excitement for Will Disley so unfounded. Well, well he was awesome. I was going to say it's not of last entirely year. unfounded. So so far, he's been great when he's on the field in this offense with this quarterback for fantasy been outstanding, but has had two really devastating injuries. And and I and I completely realize the odds are that he should not be able to come back and retain regain that starting role. My point is more if week one he is able to be the starter, if that is possible then he is the guy. Like, There's no way that he gets back and is the I week one know. starter and isn't. That's how I see it. Huh. And I let's hope, for the sake of that 
awesome drop that Big Montana right. stays around. If, yeah, I if guess he's I'm back, I'm, whatever training program Will Disley is on. Could that, be the Emmanuel a, Sanders program. See, I question that. This logic. is what America needs because you've talked about that. Like, if he can come back from this, yeah. he's he, you know he's uh, just a, a you know a miracle. But he also has been badly injured twice, so I don't know that you, his training. <laughs> well, he at least came back for something, a couple games. Is something that you you want to partake in? It's, he's good at getting he's, back from injury. He's, he's not good at strong. avoiding injury. Right. Too strong. Muscles are too strong for those tiny little tendons. That's why I always say when we played flag football, <laughs> I couldn't tear my ACL. Right. I am not fast enough. <laughs> right. My body's like, I'm fine here. Yeah, you you were not fast enough to the degree that the referees actually laughed at you running. Uh, laughed at me running on a breakaway touchdown. That's true. That's so, true. eat it, ref. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. I would encourage you to check out the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. There's an uh, updated article by our editor-in-chief extraordin mm. extraordinaire, Kyle Borg. It's the he's, Borgogan. He's the Borgogan. He's Borgognoni. He's a lot of things. Vacated target RB position article, a follow-up to last year. I encourage you to read it. All right, we had some big news, and uh, I decided just to talk about this live on the show versus in here before the show. So I, I'm going to get some real opinions, All right. uh, fresh opinions. The deadline for NFL teams to promote practice squad players to the game day roster has now been moved to just 90 minutes before kickoff. This is to accommodate the reality that a player may test positive and be forced to move to the COVID IR potentially the night before. You might find out about it the morning of. To me... I mean, this is just a byproduct of a crazy season. This has to take place, and this is a, an accommodation mm -hmm. that is appropriate for all the teams to be able to play football. But for fantasy football owners, this could cause real problems. If you find out late and you are in a league that runs waivers one time a day, uh, which a lot of people are in, we're in a fab, uh, you know, free agent acquisition budget league. We run waivers at a set time every morning. We do not have them open. I'm wondering, do we need to make an adjustment here for that situation? Because I don't, I can't see the future, certainly in 2020. I don't know whether we're going to find out about these 90 minute swaps 90 minutes before. I don't know if we're going to find out about them the night before. And there's a big difference for right. your team. There is a big difference. I would assume we wouldn't find out about the player being promoted from the practice squad until it happens. So there would be a situation where 90 minutes beforehand, they're coming up to that window and that practice squad player is uh, promoted. In which case, you've got to make a transaction. Now, of course, you can set the the time of your fab to run to be an hour before kickoff. That that should accommodate. That it. should accommodate with the sole, you know, Monday night football or or you know, uh, you know, Sunday night football. Those games might be a little bit more difficult. So, um, I know in our league, it would have an added layer of issue because we have fab penalties and rewards based on draft picks. So then. If you're making that switch, you question, do do we get rid of that? You know, level the field for everyone. I'm short on fab right now, so I vote yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know why you're bringing it up. I'm just. I, mean, I don't he care wanted... about your your money situation. Yeah, that that part you of it. Sleep is, in your bed. That part doesn't matter too much to me. But the the you know the Monday night, the Sunday night, those games are the ones that are more concerning because if you're running waivers at nine o'clock in the morning every day. But then you find out four players are out for a Sunday night game right before, and you don't have open waivers. Right. That's the situation that I think. And this is bringing it to the surface so that you can make the same type of accommodation for your league that you need to do. And I, we may need to make open waivers after waivers run daily. Sure. And or or the platforms are listening to us right now. Yes. And platforms listen uh, up. Look, all of them. And I don't know why it's not like this. Where for everyone, you know. Some platforms have the ability, some don't, but have waivers w run once a day, and then once they run on Sunday, have them be open. Like It shouldn't be that hard to make it that Sunday. Just they for run, Sunday. They yeah. run on Sunday, and then they stay open. And now I know there's going to be some other problems, like uh, maybe in the afternoon a player is put on the COVID list, someone gets elevated, and it, it will be advantageous for certain teams in the fantasy football league who have a spot to make a quick addition 
You know what I mean? Where some some teams, maybe all their players have locked in the morning. They don't have room to add somebody. I get it. There's going to be some complexities that you have to deal with for this situation. But for me, that's that is, that just that is what it is. Like I said this whole time, let's make COVID. Uh, let, let's try to negate the impact of COVID on fantasy football decisions as much as we possibly can. Yeah, I, it's a good point. And obviously, it doesn't apply to everybody out there. A lot of you play in leagues with just open waivers all the time. But the reason we don't is because we like the even playing field of, look, if you're somebody that works and something happens, you know, the advantage to your league shouldn't go to everybody who's near nearest to the computer wins. It should be something that is based on strategy, which is what Fab does. Right. Um, but to Mike's point, that might mean extending your benches a little bit. Could. Um, adjusting some of the waiver rules. I, you know, And if a platform can't accommodate something like Mike's talking about, you might have to make the decision to go o- open waivers for 2020. Right. And just, you know, deal with that consequence versus the, because what's worse? You know, at least. Sure. You know, yeah, is I it run into the computer and being late or is it well, having we're on nobody a computer, to play? So I'm, I'm fine with the open waivers. It was a detriment to us. Apparently Jason to wants to throw waivers. Fab out because he's like $5 <laughs> short or something. Because like, oh. I, I went in with a few draft picks missing. Like, there's nothing to do with this. <laughs> um, myopic. Jason is very. You know, he's looking at his own that, situation. Was, did you have one of those like tear off vocab <laughs> calendars? I look <laughs> the word of the day. The odds that I'm using that word correctly myopic. are still very low. I it's I believe yesterday I was talking biopic. about circadian rhythms instead of circadian rhythms. Myopic so. simply means nearsighted, which is exactly what I meant. You're okay. very you were kind of looking at your own fab situation. You weren't helping everybody. You were helping yourself. That's a way to interpret nearsighted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, <laughs> the official deadline for players to opt out of the NFL season is Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. So there could be a separate deadline for players with health risks. The NFL and the NFLPA spent 10 days trying to sign the paperwork, and so there's been some concessions on a 10-day period from the signing, and it ends up being Thursday. So we should know. Maybe not in totality, but in majority, how many players are out? Yeah, it's the, and and if you aren't if you weren't aware of this, there is that deadline here in a few days. So all the news of this player opts up, that player opts out. Don't worry about fantasy this season being like I don't want to just have my players opting out left or right. It's it's over after this Thursday. Nobody can opt out. I wonder if we'll have a forward. flurry on yeah, Thursday. We'll, we'll find out, and we'll bring it to you as it happens. Yes. As long as it happened <laughs> while we were recording the podcast. Ron Rivera said he was pleasantly surprised by Alex Smith's recovery from leg Let's injury. Let's go, Alex. He could compete for a start for the starting spot in Washington. He still has to be cleared by the team, I believe. Yeah. He uh Rivera said he could envision the thirty six year old Alex Smith entering the conversation. Wow, that is a lot of equivocation. <laughs> he could envision Yes. Thinking about it. <laughs> Great. Thank you. I can think about thinking. Yes. About thinking that That's Alex right. Smith will start. No, we're going to fake the fake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Preston Williams, Dolphins Prince wide receiver. Bride situation. Think about fake. Cleared for football activities. He tore his ACL in November. I think that is, to Jason's credit, I think this is bigger news than just like, a, oh, hey, Preston Williams is cleared for football. I mean, the That's what you said, right? Correct. Okay, I, I was talking to Jay. Sorry. Uh, but Preston Williams was receiving a whole bunch of targets last year for Miami before he tore his ACL. It is He's up against it. An undrafted rookie tore his ACL. He still has to come back. However, if he is all systems go, I think that changes a lot of things for Miami. He was almost my answer to the quick question. One of those late last round picks that you – look at taking a shot on he was an undrafted free agent last year made huge waves in preseason if mm-hmm. you remember everyone was like always oh, and it's like well so what people do this all the time right they're preseason superstars and then they go away and then he didn't go away he was actually very relevant to that team uh through the first I, I, th- I think it was seven or eight weeks and we've talked a lot about the difference of what happened to Devontae Parker and the difference of what happened to Mike Gesicki once Preston Williams went down. Mm-hmm. But if Preston Williams is able to come back, I mean, you know, we, we worried about uh, Cooper Cup 
he tore his ACL. Uh, the timeline was fine. He was great. He, you know, I don't. He, I don't, he, don't have a high view of. I we just disagree on that one. I don't think Preston Williams is that good. Albert Wilson missed all those games when William when Preston Williams was making hay and getting the the default targets. So uh, it depends on what you view Preston Williams as. We've talked about his catch percentage and things like that. But um, Jason and Mike, you both think it impacts. No, let me ask you this, Jason. You said he might be a late round pick. Does it negatively view, affect your Parker view more than it does your excitement for Williams, or is it? Uh, both, both sides. It, it, it's both sides more so on Gasicki than yeah. than on Devonte Parker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gasicki had he was the tale of two seasons. It was with and without Preston Williams, and without Preston Williams, he was great. Now there's the you know we talked about this with Tyler Higby yesterday. Once you prove that you can be a really valuable tool on the field, regardless of what situation put you there, like Gasicki did the second half of the year, then you can be utilized that way. So that that's the hope with Kasiki going forward. All right. Jordan Reed, Rule 86, Mike. Yeah, what is this? Jeremy Hill, Jordan Reed, they're all, all <sighs> ghosts of the hits, Christmas man. past. I'm playing hold the on, hits right hold now. Hold on. I'm going <laughs> to Google what's going on with Kristen Michael real quick. Yeah, hold on. Check on Kristen Michael. Look. He is si He's signing <laughs> with the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> it would not shock me. Is Roy Hallou on the way? Do we have oh, Roy Hallou man. on the way? Roy right? Hallou. Look. I'm not in on Jordan Reed. It's, he signed. I didn't even say it. He signed with it, the 49ers. It's it's interesting because he is back with Kyle Shanahan. Uh, look, George Kittle's the guy. I'm not taking anything away from George Kittle. If somehow Jordan Reed is on the field, to me, it would be taking things opportunities away from other wide receivers. It's, it's, I mean, Jordan Reed when he's been on the field, he's been great for football teams. He's been great for fantasy football. Well, people do. People are asking: Is the rule gone? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah look, super gone. Rules are made to be broken. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> rules are made to be broken. Rule 86. <laughs> don't, don't obey it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think. Oh, that, man. If he if could I, be great, it the, would be awesome. The current depth chart for 49ers wide receivers says that they would like to take some targets away from them. Yes. And give them to somebody else. The rule 86 has been 86. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it is, I mean, hopefully he can stay healthy. Yeah. Because yeah, he, you know, you can make more of an impact on the team than he would for fantasy potentially. It, it so. is it is ironic. I watched this very long interview with Kyle Shanahan um the day before yesterday. It was it was great. Very, Six hours. Very it insightful. Just... No, it was like an hour. <laughs> but um it, you know and an and hour? You watched an hour interview I with did. Kyle Shanahan? I did. It was evaluate your life. <laughs> oh I mean this is kind of my job. Um it's a fair point, Mike. So uh, you research for an hour? What are you doing? I don't listening. ever research for this show. I'm not watching the coach minutes. talk for well, an hour. Here's the thing. If you watch this one, I think you might because it was really, really insightful. Um, however, in that, he was talking about how the defense really led them in the beginning of the year and the offense was struggling. And it wasn't until they brought in Emmanuel Sanders that the rest of the offense started to click. And so now they lost Emmanuel Sanders. They lost Debo Samuel. And so the fact that they go out and sign Jordan Reed was interesting to me right after that, thinking like maybe he will be used not in anything taking away from George Kittle, but they just might need a veteran who can go get open. How would you feel, for example, if Jordan Reed signed with the Kansas City Chiefs instead of the San Francisco 49ers about Travis Kelsey? I wouldn't have it impact Travis Kelsey one iota, and I'm Agreed. not having it impact George Kittle. All right. Uh, we'll do some fantasy Q&A in a moment. Before we do, I want to thank today's sponsor. That's WGU. Are you ready to earn your degree but need a university that works with your schedule? At WGU, their programs were built to be flexible. More flexible than Jason. More flexible than Mike. Oh, that's Extreme. not hard to do. I, I, I realize that. <laughs> they offer a quality degree program that's affordable, flexible, and uh, it makes it possible to graduate faster. Plus, you can earn a respected bachelor's or master's degree for under $8,700 per year with fees included. Uh, there's no set login times. There's 24-7 access to most coursework. You can earn a respected degree on your schedule. They have a flat rate tuition that covers as many courses as you can complete each term. So they're doing some smart stuff here. And you can get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers. That's wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers for your $65 application fee waived. And 
Foot Clan, want to tell you about this. Look, some of you know that the Spitballers podcast is out there. You're listening. You're enjoying it. There's been rumors. Your your Mondays are just a little bit better because you fire up a podcast with three dads just having a good time, talking about nonsense, drafting ridiculous the hosts, things. The hosts are okay. I, Look, li- I like them. It's us. It's the Spitballers podcast. It's our other pod. If you enjoy, uh, you know, when the, when the nonsense breaks out on this show, that's all the Spitballers is. There is not football, but it's a great time. It's very funny. I do Every- not prepare for it in no. any way, shape, or form. No, that's true. Yeah, there's, I've done there's no, no research. Hour, <laughs> no hour-long videos of Kyle Shanahan. No, no, no. Like if, if you want to make your Monday just a little bit better, Subscribe to the Spitballers podcast wherever podcasts are And this week's episode is a dad joke draft. Oh, yes. So don't want to miss that. I definitely want to do another one of those. That was so And fun. then I want to do like one with pun jokes as well. Like, mm, Okay. We'll probably it has gr- to be a pun? Yeah, it has to be a pun. All right. I think, I think we've got some All right. I'm great in. material. <laughs> that didn't take me long to figure out. All right, let's do some mailbag. Mailbag. Q and A. Nice. You called it fantasy Q and A before the break, and I thought it was very funny. Yeah, I mean it's just a different way to, it's a different spin, Mike. It's spin. I, well that, I, and I spun it right back. Yeah, no, it was it was nice. Never I like spin a spinner. I I like when you scream mailbag a little bit more. It just rolls a little better, but that's okay. We're here. We're They're here not now. all winners. We're Andy. here now. <laughs> Uh, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button if you want to send us your fantasy football question. You can also dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We're going to kick it off with a voicemail. Hi, this is Marcia from Beaver, Oregon. I'm in a keeper league, and I'm trying to choose between Michael Thomas and Lamar Jackson. Who should I keep? I can only keep one. I love your show. You guys helped me get into my league Super Bowl last year, and I lost to my former husband, who's a friend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he so was he was your husband Bye. at the time, but now. Oh, no. thank you, Marcia. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is. I think this is a a deeper question than it seems on the surface because I know all of our instantaneous answer is Michael Thomas is Michael the player Thomas. to keep. Right. The reason I say that is because. In a lot of leagues where people are not consuming a lot of fantasy content, they don't have that mindset around late round quarterbacks or viewing valuations the way that we do. Like, it would be easy to say, okay, you take Michael Thomas because he is the player that would go ahead of Lamar Jackson in the draft. I don't think that's true in a lot of leagues. Lamar Jackson will go higher in a lot of leagues because of in some in, home leagues, yeah, he in will. home leagues, like yeah. which this might you know be that situation. Sure. And I'm not saying that's a reason to keep Lamar Jackson. I just mean. You, the right pick is Michael Thomas, and you're probably going to see Lamar Jackson go in the first few picks. Yeah. And don't question your decision is my point. Sure, yeah. And and, and if he does go, that you, you need to realize that when you – if you got to pick every pick of the draft, you would take Michael Thomas before taking Lamar Jackson. Now, there are plenty of questions that I've seen this year because Lamar Jackson was a late-round quarterback last season where it's – do you want to keep Michael Thomas for a, a second – or Lamar Jackson for a ninth, then that right. becomes yeah. Throw uh, some value in there. Then that becomes a question where you might pivot to Lamar Jackson. Sure. All right. Instagram question from Joshua. Hey guys, bonjour. Oh, bonjour from Edmonton, Alberta. Oh, bonjour. <laughs> Can you talk a bit about Chris Godwin's dynasty value? I have been shopping him in a full PPR super flex. I've been surprised that people seem to be very low on him. I'm having trouble getting wide receiver one value back. Thanks in advance, guys. I think I've felt that as well about Chris Godwin's value. Hmm. And I think it's very common in players that make the jump uh, to have that, you know, for some people in the league, is it real? Is it a mirage? You've got the quarterback transition. I think if Jameis Winston was there, you would not be having trouble getting value, believe it or not. No, I completely agree. There's question marks about the future because even if – He's great this year with Tom Brady. How many years can yes. Tom Brady really have left? And then what happens after Brady? I, I completely agree. In fact, it's part of why Michael Thomas is my first pick in Dynasty is the fact that Jameis is there and is the possible future behind Drew Brees. Isn't it just a one year? It's yes. just a one year, yes. But I, I would imagine right, so it gives them what a What happens is Jameis completes his training with Drew Brees, and then he just goes back to Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Is Bruce Arians still the coach? Uh, 
I, 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 so I, I do agree with you that I, I think Chris Godwin's value right now is ironically being held down by Tom Brady. So, so let me ask the follow up then, because we agree that that's happening. Should he be shopping him? Is no. that how you would view? You know, is he a dynasty darling to you? If what he it, look, if you're shopping around, if you're trying to trade Chris Godwin, I mean, I'm guessing there are some holes on the team. You're trying to take a superstar player, cash in, re your team the problem is you instantly it doesn't matter who the player is you instantly lose value the second you say hey would you like to trade for this player it doesn't matter who they are you're right it's look it's it's just negotiating if you come to me saying i can trade for this player i know you want to get rid of them and now i know i don't have to impress you with my trade i'm going to keep lowballing you until we hit the lowest possible threshold you're willing to take to trade the player away. So, look, you've got Chris Godwin. He's 24. He is awesome. He, he's he got Tom Brady. Maybe he's got Tom Brady for two years. I, Maybe there's seven. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, the plan, man, is is infinite. But the, oh! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but I'm not worried about. I'm not worried about three years from now when Chris Godwin might have a bad quarterback. Like, I'm playing him right now. He's he is a great wide receiver and he's in a great situation again. Yeah, you're probably not going to get the value that you should get. He is a top ten overall pick in all three of our dynasty rankings, and I believe he should be. Mike makes an outstanding point about trade trading and the kind of manipulation that can happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you should never you're never gonna get a good deal if you have to follow up a trade offer with explaining why a player's good. That's not how you get value. That other trade partner has to know how good that player is to want them and to give you the value that you want. If you have to say, no, 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 yeah. no, Chris Godwin, do you see he finished his this stat and here's his stats and here's his this. Here's what you got. Work. You, you got to go in with a Trojan horse, man. Yes, you do. You go in with the player that you don't want to yes. trade. Yes. And, and then you somehow just massage this conversation into – making them think they are starting the trade conversation for Chris Godwin. You must mm. go into their dreams. A hundred percent what you do. What you make the <laughs> offer and the offer is something that, you know, it's outlandish. And then you go, well, I might be in, I might be willing to do this with Chris Godwin. I like it. Second pass. Yeah. Make it happen. All right. YouTube question from Samuel, JK Dobbins or Kenyon Drake mm. in a half PPR dynasty league. Love the show. Thank you, ballers. Great question. Bird it, in the hand or two in the bush? That's right. that's basically what this is, right? I mean, J.K. Dobbins' future appears to be very bright. Obviously, the Lamar Jackson-led Baltimore Ravens running the ball. It, it, it looks like you're going to get four, five, six years of... Looks like it. Sure. Well, I mean, that's all we can do is, is take a look at what we believe the future is. We're going to be wrong on things when you're talking five six years down the line but that's what it looks like it's called, it's called eddie lacying but go on right sure. um and then Kenyon drake is on a one-year deal so i think Kenyon drake's gonna be awesome this year uh i i mean if i'm going to take one of these two guys i think it would be drake for me personally the way that i play even in dynasty i'm always trying to win a championship and it doesn't matter how, you know, if I can win the championship, I would rather win it this year and not worry about next year than, than always have a bright future but never be good enough right now to win a championship. Kenyon Drake needs to be looked at through a one-year lens. That, I, that would be my one thing that mm, I, I just I do agree with that. bring up because he's on, an, you know, a, a single-year deal in Arizona. Don't know what the future holds. Don't know what Chase Edmonds is going to be able to do on that team. Um uh, if you're playing for now, Kenyon Drake is the better play, without question, if you're playing for today. The nice thing is that Kenyon Drake at 26 years old could very easily be re-signed with the Arizona Cardinals after a good season. They could, I mean, I, Steve Kime traded for him, paid up on the transition tag. I expect that they will sign him, but if they if they don't, then that's, I mean, next year's free agent running back class is outlandish and you wouldn't expect him to just go and get the best job available on the open market because there's better running backs. I think the Cardinals, my answer is Drake 
uh, I believe that the Cardinals will re-sign him. If you have to think back to the situation the team was in, they, you know, the cap problems. You're already committed to a running back for a huge contract. You can't offer Drake anything. You can of of an actual like this is guarantee. This is the type of contract you're going to want. That's why you offer him the one deal or the one year deal that says we're going to give you about ten million dollars, and then we will figure it out. And that's what you they should, did. You should be living in the one year world for every running back if you're an NFL franchise anywhere. I mean, you should not be shelling out big time money. You, it's funny you say a 26 year old Drake. He'll be 27 when they have to sign him, and oh, then yeah. all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, he's 27. You sign him yeah. to a three year deal. J.K. Dobbins is whatever, yeah. 21, 22. It, it just changes so fast at the running back position. But see, that's why I think in dynasty, when if you're an NFL franchise, you need to be looking at every running back as a one year guy. It's almost that way for fantasy. I mean, you, you know, if you can get a great guaranteed year out of a guy, that might be at the running back position. At, I completely agree. At the running back position, you don't worry about what happens three years from now because three years from now, Christian McCaffrey could be out of the league. I know that sounds crazy, but yeah. if we said that about Todd Gurley being irrelevant, uh, you know, two years ago or even at the beginning of last year, it seems insane. Best part about talking dynasty on this show is I know I'll just have some like trade offers from other owners in our leagues about the players we like and don't like on the show. <laughs> you know how many AJ Green offers I got over the last three or four days? <laughs> All right. Instagram question from Kate. He says, thoughts on Noah Fant as a tight end one. Um, I'll, I'll answer this one being the most bullish on Noah Fant. Mm -hmm. I mean, being a tight end one in fantasy is not as difficult as you think. I I don't know if you realize this. Noah Fan was the tight end sixteen in his rookie year. Say that that's part a of, four spot. Part <laughs> of being a tight end one is well, did you play fifteen or sixteen games? You've got a chance. Yeah, I mean he 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 had a couple of games last year where he was inside. You know he had a weekly finish of two. He had a weekly finish of three. Um, he definitely flashed. He, you know he was drafted with uh, you know high draft capital to come in and be an athletic pass catching tight end. I'm not the biggest believer in Drew Locke, but I don't think it takes very much for a player that has the explosive play capability of Noah Fant to finish as a tight end one. I have him as a tight end one. I think I'm the only one in this yeah. office that does. So I, I believe in that possibility for sure. You are the only one who has it projected, I, but I don't sit over here denying that it, it could happen. Like Fant, first-round pick, the dude, 250 pounds, ran a 4-5. Like he, is a, he is a beast. He is the type of player that you want to target – uh, as a late round tight end who could break out into the next tier, you know our our favorite go to stat for Chris Herndon is he was a rookie tight end who hit over 500 receiving yards in his rookie year, which is is very rare. Noah Fant is in that category as well. He's just the the anchor of Drew Locke is holding me down from projecting the jump for for, for Fant like as, as well as like Blake Jarwin more yes. than Noah Fant because you trust Dak Prescott more than Drew Locke. Yes, and and also you know just what the Broncos have added. It wasn't just Jerry Judy; like they they retooled the entire offense. Well, the nice thing is we saw Fant. He was drafted with the capability, and then we saw on the NFL field the ability to have a massive breakaway touchdown. Yeah, yeah and not end, all tight ends can do that. Right, but when they can, it's it's. You Reminds know, me of Mark Andrews in his rookie year. Absolutely, Mark yeah. Andrews or, or Kittle. We see him, you know, do that all right. all the time, and that kind of takes away some of the Drew Lock pressure. He, he sure. doesn't need the 120 targets and you know have this great quarterback play. He can make things happen on his own. So I have him right now outside of my top 12. I just checked. If I were to give him one more touchdown in my projections, he is a tight end one. So he's he's right on the cusp. Definitely can happen. And honestly, um, I would draft him ahead of some of the guys that I currently have him ranked behind. You know, Jack Doyle, for instance, is ranked projection-wise ahead of Noah Fant. He's, if very, I'm a, he's safe. Because he's safe. Yeah. His production is more, you know, a, a known commodity. But if I'm in a draft and I'm deciding between those guys, I'm definitely going with the upside of Noah Fant because I, you know, the downside of, if you get the, the downside of either guy, I don't care. If you get the upside of either guy, well, one could be a breakout star right. in Noah Fant. That is not a world that Jack Doyle can live in. Not no. with those baby hands. No. <laughs> YouTube question, does Hunter Renfro hold any late-round redraft value? It's an interesting question because when you look at Mox right now, he is one of the players that pops up in the last round in that category of names that we brought up earlier. 
for me, the answer is yes in a full PPR format. I think he's worth a last round pick in full PPR to see how much of the if if he continues what he did at the end of last year to begin this upcoming year in Las Vegas. I don't have any problem with it. it he certainly could. Uh, I mean, what if he was like a top five guy over his last couple games? Yeah, he was outstanding. I mean, he t- took a. Uh, I remember a really long reception to the house. Great play. Similar to the Broncos, though, the, to me, the Raiders, they, they added so many pieces to their offense that it's hard to r- expect that Renfro will get the same kind of a target share that he did last year with with Ruggs and Edwards. I mean, they, they added a lot of guys. So Aguilar. I don't, I, I don't, yeah, I, he I don't hate the it, last but, two two weeks as the number six. Each yeah. of each week he was the number six wide receiver in week sixteen and seventeen, but. um your point's well taken. I mean, there's just so many options for Derek Carr. Yes. Hopefully, you know, Josh Jacobs is one of them. Hopefully. All right, a Facebook question from Brian. In a startup dynasty league, when would you take Clyde Edwards Alaire? So, Ooh. Mike, startup dynasty. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to take Edwards Alaire probably in the top seven. Maybe top eight, but at least if you're going to grab him, it has to be in the top seven. I don't like take taking running backs that high in in dynasty startups. They are much easier to find in your rookie drafts. Meanwhile, elite wide receivers are much harder to get in your rookie drafts. So I I prefer to load up on them. But if if you want him, you're gonna have Come to and claim. You're him. gonna have to go and get him. <laughs> He's our consensus running back four. In dynasty startups, basically got the big three: Christian McCaffrey, Saquon, and and Zeke. He is our consensus number four. Mike and I is number four, number six for uh, Andy. But yeah, if you he's going to be taken in the top ten picks, and There's, I agree with Mike. I'm not. He's worth it. He's he's worth that. But I like building my <clears throat> dynasty rosters with young stud, long term wide receivers. Champ, champ has some good wide receivers. I'm going to put it that way. Yeah. That's that's Jason. All right, final question. Ryan wants to know what characteristics make up a good fantasy football team name and a good league name. Mm. I have I have two great answers for this. Oh, Please well. share. You have the floor. <laughs> what do you want printed on the trophy? All right. Okay. okay. All You'd right. Be proud to have that on the trophy. And number two, don't name it after a player that you end up wanting to trade later on. I know that the player team names it's, are really it's fun. Very, I mean, they're it's very compelling. fun. Yeah. I mean, they're great. But but you might want to trade that player like week one, and then you got to change your team name again. Or I'm a you dynasty keep guy. your team name and yeah. you don't even have the player. I was asked about that. Uh, my, my official stance on if you have a player pun team name, does said player have to be on your team? And I said, yes, of yeah, course. Yeah, of course. Like, you know, Josh Jacobs, Jingle, Jingle Hammer Schmidt. Schmidt. Yeah. yeah. If you're a little red Fournette, yeah. that's you. He better be on your roster. I mean, that doesn't make sense if he's not on your roster. I, I agree. That's why it's. I've it's never fun. done it, one of the player names for any league I've ever been in. I've I don't never think I've chose, ever done it either. And I love reading them because they're always funny and catchy and now, punny. There, there is, I mean, it's possible to get away with it if you've got a legend. You can go a legend name because sure, it doesn't like matter. Someone like that's a retired. Reti- yeah, someone that's retiring, but. Yeah, I mean, if if sure. you know Kurt Warner's your favorite NFL player of all time, sure. if you've got a great pun name with him, then then you could keep that. But I I do agree. I like keeping a team name year after year after year in a league that you're going to be with mostly the same people. That way, the franchise has meaning. You know, right? Yeah. All right. Before we close things out, I want to thank Pristine Auction for sponsoring the show. Reminder: It's Pristine Week. I watched some of this yesterday. They're giving a hundred. They have a hundred thousand dollars worth of giveaways, new ways to win each and every day. Sports memorabilia from Pristine Auction. They have a special code that you got to use this week. If you go to pristineauction.com, use the code PW2020. You get ten dollars off your first item. That's PW2020. Uh, they were on the live stream yesterday, giving away full size helmets, giving away signed jerseys, wearing fake mustaches. It was pretty good. So check it out at pristineauction.com. I'll tell you this. Uh, two things real quick. We did just thankfully. Okay. We just won something on Pristine Auction Ooh. last night. So that'll be in the oh, mail. No. Is it for the for the wall? 
Yeah, of course it's for the wall. It's for us all. For the wall. For us all. It'll be here in a couple days. And tomorrow, Makalaka Ding Dong. Oh, yes. We are doing a mock draft. I assume we are going mono e mono e mono. We are now. As the monos are known to do. Yes. So You're going down. So Not s- Sam Darnold, but yeah. yeah. Not that mono. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.